welcome to Artists at Work. Lucian Freud, he was the grandson of the famous Sigmund Freud, the psychiatrist. Uh, Lucian Freud was a British, British painter and he recently died, most recently in 2011 in July. He passed away at the age of 88. He was most well known for his wonderful ability to paint the human figure in a very retrospective and a very um, direct and ruthless inspection. That's what he called himself. He loved to make a record of his friends. His paintings were a documentary of people that he loved and interesting faces and people he cared about. One person he cared about a great deal created quite a stir. Her name was, well, she was the Queen of England. And in 2001, he completed a painting of her, a portrait. Well, it was, I suppose, a very lovely painting, but the tabloids did not like it at all. They were not kind towards uh, Freud. One tabloid said, this painting is a travesty. Another tabloid was a little more gentle with his um, critique of Freud, but he did say, Freud and the Queen have seen so much. They are both alike in many ways. They are so easily and stoically bored. They've been around and they know who they are. So this painting is a painting of experience. Our next lady is a painting lady and she has a lot of experiences. She knows how to get up close and personal with all the faces that she encounters. And you will have to see for yourself what I mean. But let's meet Judy Takas. Welcome, Judy. Hi, Carol. And I botched that intro, <laughs> but that's OK. It's OK. That was a lot to say from memory. Yeah, that was a lot to say. <laughs> But I'm so happy you're with me, Thank and you. your paintings will just speak for themselves. Everybody has to look up Sigmund Freud. He is really something to Lucian. see. Lucian <laughs> Freud and Sigmund too. But um, your paintings are just eye-popping, and you cannot walk by them without at least stopping and wondering, who are they and what are they? But I suppose you hear that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. You sometimes? Yeah. 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 You, are, you are a four-time Best of Show winner this year in 2011? Yes. I understand. Yeah. Actually, this has been a very good year. Yes, it has. And um, it's been a very good year for me, and it's also been a very good year for the human face, I think, in Northeast Ohio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, every single one of the four Best of Shows that I won this year, time for Tomika, Robert and his enigmatic beard. <laughs> Yes. Actually, I'll tell you which one. Time for Tomika won at the um, Shaker Heights Library show. Yes. Robert and his enigmatic beard won Best of Show at the Lakeland May show. Jim, uh, Valentine for Jim, won Best of Show at Bay Arts just this past October. Yes, that's yes, on the west yes. side. And then Cracking Up and Stillness one together as a diptych, which is a two-part painting, best of show at the Valley Art Center in uh, Chagrin Falls, Ohio. Yes, and I'm so glad that we're able to show these paintings because a Valentine for Jim, I think, is, um, they're all fabulous. They're all fabulous. And everywhere you go, I think you're breaking ground. People are seeing that these quirky faces, these people they've never met, um, stand alone as a piece of artwork. But in Valentine for Jim, now, uh, I have watched you paint that. You did a lovely job on his face, and then you came back the next week with these hands coming inside. And I was most intrigued because you seem to have a fascination with the body parts and the yeah. hands, maybe. Yeah. Well, my favorite thing to paint for number one is faces. Mm -hmm. Number two is hands. Is hands. Number three is feet. Feet. I love feet. And all those are the fun parts. Yes. All those are yes. the fun parts that stick off your mm -hmm. body. The ones, the things that make you very specific. Mm -hmm. And painting hands is very difficult. Probably mm -hmm. about two years ago, I was not painting hands well. I was making them very general, and I decided I just needed to roll up my sleeves and get down and dirty yes. with hands. So yes. I painted my own hands, and my own hands are really good because. They're sort of androgynous. They're not beautiful lady hands, mm -hmm. but they're not big hairy man hands yeah. either. They can go yeah. either way. I've got way. working hands too. That's and right. These, and these, the paint, the hands in Valentine for Jim are my hands. The All ones right. up here. All these right. ones down here at the bottom, obviously, are his hands. And um, mostly, the what I when I put together these compositions, I say. What, what calls to me compositionally, mm -hmm. and then also meaning-wise. And sometimes meaning -wise. the meaning 
feeds the composition. Right. Sometimes the composition feeds the meaning. Well, before we this, get into this painting, uh -huh. I wanted to say, and with the Valentine for hands, I know you tell a story in most uh -huh. of your paintings. There is a secret little story, a history, a joke, maybe even something mm -hmm. light and whimsical that you're thinking of and you right. want to tease the viewer. Right. But right. I know that your mother is a writer, isn't yes, she? Yes, she is. Yes. She yeah. writes novels? What she writes novels, she writes, she's written books, she's written factual, um, uh, she wrote my grandmother's memoirs mm -hmm. um, about uh, World War II Hungary. Yes. And um, So this is in a way, in a way you're almost doing the same thought process only in a visual form. Yeah, yeah, making, uh, making mm -hmm. up stories mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. That is kind of what I do because I mean, a lot of people come with their own stories. When you do, when you do a painting of somebody, and faces come always, with their own stories. And faces stories, come with their they? own stories. Yeah. Yes. And uh, when you paint somebody, especially somebody that you know really well, you know all their baggage. You yes. know every psychological drama that they might have had at some point during their life. And <laughs> and you know, if you're you writing, know more than you want to know. Yes. Yeah. And if yeah. you're writing, if, say, a novel, an uh, you know, a biography, you could get them really ticked off at you yes. if you spill all their yes. baggage out there. Yes. But with well, opinion, you're, you're spilling some baggage, well, but this is you. That's, that's you. just me. So yeah. I, I can control my how much baggage yes. I'm spilling or not spilling. Yes. And a lot of it is drama because obviously it's more interesting to have hands like this, like I've got all kinds of mm -hmm. anguish, mm -hmm. when I, I'm a little bit more ordinance suburban and normal than that. I, yeah. I, I mean, I well, am, because you live in Solon, Ohio. I live in Solon, Ohio. That's right. And, and you know, I have a reasonably normal, yes. nice. Yes, you good, have friends in you know, Bainbridge and all over in right. our backyard here. And hopefully some people are actually watching this in Aurora because I do have friends in Aurora and Twinsburg but and what, Akron now. One more thing before we go mm -hmm. into your background and where you came from. But your mother, now I was in bed last night thinking about all these wonderful things that I wanted to bring out about mm -hmm. you and your history. But your mother, now every chapter she has to come up with a title. Your paintings... Part of your paintings and the intrigue is you have these fabulous titles. And I can't even say. I can't too. even say like a man with a Valentine or Valentine mm -hmm. hands, um, an enigmatic beard. I can't even say that. And and what is this entitled? This one is called Controlling Mom, Controlling Self. Portrait. See, see. I mean, every painting. You don't want to just go see the painting. You want to find out why she painted what she painted. They all yeah. have a little history to them. Mm -hmm. And I love it. And this one in particular, I probably went through about 30 titles. I can Did show you? you the notebook where I wrote down my first title. Because this started as that cliche, see no evil, hear no evil, I speak no evil. Say. And I put a little twist on it because, mm -hmm. you know, she's not totally blocking up her mouth because she was going to say something. She's not totally <laughs> blocking up her eyes because she really wants to see. She's not totally blocking her ears because she wants to hear. So, yes. you know, the, it started out as sort of that cliche as yes. a little bit of an excuse to use expressions because I love painting expressions, paint hands, I love painting hands. Now, would you go into this kind of with a general idea, see, hear, and, and, yes. and no speaking, just with that general thought process and then as a springboard go off to wherever you wanted to? Kind, kind of. What, what, I, what I do, um, I pose myself and take photographs of myself. I mm -hmm. use a little little clicker and I yeah. make my expression and then I click it. In the bathroom mirror, do you do this in the bathroom? I, I, well, I do yeah. it sometimes in the bathroom yeah. mirror, but I usually do everything in my studio. Yes. But I do have a mirror behind the camera. Like mm -hmm. I set up the tripod, have a mirror behind the camera so I can see myself. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit blindly because I have the mirror there so that I can see the little digital image behind yes. it. Yes. And, and then I do my expressions and hope that when the timer goes off, because I set it with the timer, and sometimes I do it with a little remote clicker. Good but like for if I you. need to, if I need to use my hands, mm -hmm. I can't remote click. Mm -hmm. So I just set it for ten seconds, and then come back and go. <gasps> well, one thing about click. using and yourself then it for a model, there's no excuses. You're exactly. always available. I'm you're always, always available, there. and you're always on time. And I'm always on time. <laughs> and there's an old expression. And you don't have to pay yourself. <laughs> and I'm free. I'm Unless free. you want to go shopping. And I'm really good too mm -hmm. because I don't have an ego about it. I don't care that's right. if the artist makes me look bad because that's, right. that's really not the point. The that's point is to make a good painting and the model is secondary. Now, a paying client doesn't want to hear that. No, and you um, said something I really like. Do you want pretty or do you want to see the soul? Yeah, yeah. I want which, to see the soul. I want to see what's in that person, what's behind their eyes, why they have the twinkle, why they're sad. I want the story. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree so much. But let's get back to our viewers don't know. Who are you? Where, okay. I mean, were you born and raised in Cleveland? I actually mm. was born in New York City, but we moved here when I was four. 
Um, and I grew up in Cleveland. I went to the Cleveland Institute of Art, graduated in 1986. I was an illustration and portrait painting major. You were. And I studied under Jose Cintron, who mm -hmm. um, was a phenomenal portrait teacher. And I... Um, at the Institute. At the Institute. At the Institute. And I majored in illustration. So Great. That's the, the best of the both worlds. Illustration yes. gave me a lot of the drawing background mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. where I was able to just learn how to actually draw something mm -hmm. um, and I gravitated towards the hands and the you faces did. and the people and the expressions Even then. and things like that. Yeah, that's always been what's mm -hmm. interested me. I think I I probably have a total of three landscapes to my credit I was gonna and ask I was you. forced to do I was going to ask you, I am dying they to see forced. a good old fashioned banana or a tree. But I know <laughs> you probably you probably don't have one because you're just not a landscape. I, well, still you know, life or this, abstract girl. This paint, there are some paintings that trip me up a little bit because somehow I need to put a tree in them. Yes. And I, I've seen some funny things in your paintings mm -hmm. um, that I don't want to mention. The viewers just have to go to one of your shows mm -hmm. and see them. Um, tree trunks with funny things coming out. <laughs> and you know, I oh, mean, that's right. and you yes. may have a banana yeah. in somebody's ear. Yeah. She has all kinds of little secrets. You have to look very closely, mm -hmm. but we'll leave that for the viewer. Mm -hmm. So you do get a little still life within your porch. Yes, times. occasionally I will have to just because the meaning is going a certain way. So I will have to put something that I like painting less into it. Yes, I try to avoid that as much as possible. Yes. And if I need to put something that I like painting less, I try to pick something that I don't mind painting, like mm -hmm. a piece of fruit, something mm -hmm. more organic. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. instance, well, you've had the eggs that mm -hmm. woke the right. painting with which the are hard to do. I don't really like painting the eggs. They're they're. There's just a beautiful translucency that I just can't get. Yes. And I don't know well, how hard I want to work you're at it. you're a perfectionist. You're a perfectionist. That's right. But, like, for instance, you'll never see a car engine in one of my paintings. No, no matter how great of a concept I come up with where it requires a car engine, I'm going to switch that concept because I don't want to paint that car engine. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you just don't want to do it. Well, let's move on. What what could we do for painting number two? Do you have a little okay. Hawaiian scene over there? Or? Yeah. Well, this one right here, actually, is... Um, this one is called 87 and Sunny. Oh, this, oh, 85 and Sunny or 87? You know what? I have two paintings. I have one called 85 and Sunny and one called 87 oh, and Sunny. this is 87 and this Sunny. This is 87 and Sunny. Okay. Because I, can, I wonder if the cameraman can get the whole thing in. I'm hoping he can. He's, he's, mm -hmm. he's good. He's going to get the whole thing in. Now, this man, did he know you were taking a picture no, of him? No, he did not. No, he did wonder not. wonder if you could set him so we can see okay. your face. Right here. He... Um, and but I still would like the camera to see okay. him while we're talking. Can you okay. Move him over. Um, now, how did you capture this man? I know you have okay. a little trick, and I want to yeah. hear. Yeah. Yeah. What I what I will do a lot of times, I bring my camera everywhere we go, mm -hmm. or I try to, and sometimes mm -hmm. I'm kicking myself that I don't have my stupid right. camera when we're someplace right. because I love these sort of little strangers that interest me yes. where I don't... Um, I don't know if this camera can okay. see. Should we pull this back? Maybe up? I should Just go. Just a wee tad like this. Okay. Okay. Um, now they can't see you. I want them to see <laughs> your pretty face. Here. Why don't I put it down? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. We'll, we'll hold them up again. Okay. The... Um, Basically, what I what I did what I do sometimes I'll take my camera with me when we go go on trips and stuff, mm -hmm. and if I see a stranger that kind of interests me, especially mm -hmm. if they're kind of still for a while yes. and I have an opportunity, I will sometimes have my kids and they're in on it. You but guys I have, have to, to listen to this. Them. This is a good little I trick. I will sometimes have my kids pose for me, and I'll say, "Just stand over here and pose for me," and I'll pretend like I'm taking a picture of my kid and really be taking a picture of the stranger yes. from behind. Yes. Because it is intimidating, and you you want to be kind towards the stranger. You don't want to make them feel bad. But right, once right. Once in a while, it's okay to get a little someday, sneaky shot. Someday, I hope to have the courage and the time and the whatever to actually go up to a stranger mm -hmm. and say, I just love the mm -hmm. way you look. I wonder if mm -hmm. I could pose for some paint. Well, you, didn't you do that? Now, there's the Hawaiian man. Yes. And Rasta Man, Rasta yes, Man, yes, um, Rasta Man is called Rasta Man selling me a bracelet on the road to Hana. I was thinking about him last night with the hair sticking up in his beads, the mm -hmm. way you painted the beads, because I know you have a limited palette per se. Do yeah, you, would you say? You know, I actually don't have a limited palette. It just comes out that way. It does. <laughs> it does. But with the Rasta but, Man, I saw all kinds of color in there. I right, don't usually see you painting with. Because the beads are. You know, we're we're pure, pure, mm -hmm. pure color. Mm -hmm. And he was he was actually stand he he was at a at the at a rest stop 
in Hawaii. We were on the road to Hana, which is this windy, twisty road that you follow for three hours and you're hoping that there's another car isn't coming the other yes, way. Yes, could have fallen and off at any moment. And there's lots of rest stops on this road. And you um, you stop and, um, you know, <laughs> look at whatever the scenery. And here was this Rasta man selling bracelets. He had them all spread out now, what on a blanket. Is, what is Rastan? Rasta. A Rasta, Rasta man with... Um, that's that's where they have the dreadlocks. Oh, I see. And it's actually a way of thought. Also, okay. it's a it's a. I don't even want to say it's a religion, but it's like a way of thought. That it looks I'm like his way of thought was his uh, getting high. Or well, something. he was. I'm sure he <laughs> you, was. He you didn't captured say that much. quite well in his he eyes. He didn't say much. But um, I did. I I asked. I bought a couple bracelets from him because I wasn't you know gonna mm -hmm. get anything for free because. It's always better. And I said, do you mind if I take a couple of photos right. of you? And he and didn't he mind like, at all. Yeah, he was fine with it. Mm -hmm. And he just stood there. He smiled a little bit, not too mm -hmm. much. You know, he was just this right amount of happy. So I took the, uh, I took a couple of photos of him, and I took those back, back home yes. with me, back yes. to my studio, and yes. worked, worked from now, those. Now, we're talking a little bit in and out because I know with your portraits, you said that you hope to be on the front end of this new tidal wave. Hopefully, people are appreciating Big heads, larger than life heads, mm -hmm. um, and with this Rasta man, mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind having him in my own home because I think he is fun and festive, mm -hmm. whimsical. You have got the little tears in his eyes, and it's just art for art's sake. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed him. Mm -hmm. Well, but, thank you. But getting back to that, and, he's for sale. Um, he's I know he's. For sale. <laughs> <laughs> I do have wall space. I do have wall space. Maybe I can take him home with me. But. Um, Getting back to the larger than life, what gave you the idea to do these big heads? And maybe, maybe we well, can refer to your son back part, here. Is, yes, actually, the um, is the, this is this your son on the easel back one, here? This one is my youngest son right here, mm -hmm. and he right now is my best muse because mm -hmm. he's still not self-conscious. Right. He doesn't like. I mean, he'll make goofy faces, mm -hmm. which you know sometimes I'll express. I'll, I'll paint those and that's that's fine um, but he is he's the most I see him in his preteen years there yes, almost he yes. exactly is and yeah. this this painting is called on the cusp mm -hmm. um, and I actually painted it on our birthday because we Aww. shared the same birthday oh really and he was on the cusp mm -hmm. he's 12 mm -hmm. about to turn 13 See, I can see that you did I'm it well. 49 about to turn 50 mm -hmm. Very and good. we're both on the cusp on the of cusp. Virgo yes. to Libra there you go so that's why I called that one on the cusp. well that is a very that's one of your more sensitive uh, realistic paintings yeah. I think and also because he's so smooth mm -hmm. like children they're smooth and they're hard to paint aren't and they? they're hard to paint because they're so smooth like older people it's fun because you got you know you don't have to go too far <laughs> before you get a wart yeah. or a yeah. wrinkle yeah. or uh, some kind yeah. of a, a mark or a wrinkle or yes. like a neck sag yeah. or yeah. just all Anything. that fun stuff you don't have to go too far yeah. whereas with kids they're so smooth it's like there's a mile from here to here it's like a mile and a half mm -hmm. of just dead real estate yes. that needs to come well, out. Well, as in the chest area and, yeah. is a very hard area to paint, I think, because it's dead right. real estate. Because there's think. so much flat space, mm -hmm. but it's really not flat, but you can't overemphasize it mm -hmm. because then you make him look like a wrinkled person. Well, and you paint these in oils. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. Only oils, no yeah. acrylics. No, I don't know how to use acrylics. Okay. I'm not very good at acrylics. Okay, I'm sure you would be. Very good. Now, you have three boys? I have three boys, yes. And yeah. explain just real quickly three. before we go to the next painting, what is your daily routine? Because with three boys, and I've met your husband, he's very busy. How do you do it? Well, it's it's nice and convenient now. I mean, I really have a very good good mm -hmm. situation. They go and to a school. Beautiful studio. And a beautiful studio. Yeah, we a few years ago we built a house mm -hmm. with a beautiful studio for me, mm -hmm. and um, so basically on school mornings I wake up about six or so, mm -hmm. get everybody. You know, they all have to get off to school and just mm -hmm. make sure that I'm down there. You know, being mom for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. That ends about eight thirty. The last one gets on the bus, and then I come up to my studio. Then you're woohoo! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then I come up, up to stairs. my studio with my coffee and yes. my, um, you know, basically my coffee. Yes, I know that and, routine. And and I go up there and I get my music going. And, oh. and I'm I get my lights on. I yes. get my take my paint out of the fridge because I keep my mm -hmm. palettes in the fridge. Mm -hmm. I have fridge Which is up a good there. trick for you back home yeah, starting it, the paint. It um it just keeps them from drying yes. out too fast. 
and um, and then I start painting. Sometimes I check my Facebook first, and I sort mm -hmm. of do my little administrative. Well, would you do this Monday through Friday? Monday through Friday, that's you, what I do. You treat it as a regular job. I treat it as a regular job. Yeah, very I totally good. do. I dress, you know, I dress for painting. Mm -hmm. I I try very hard not to, like, if I don't get the dishes done or if I don't get the laundry folded or whatever, you know, the mom job for, by a certain time. By the time the kids get off to school. I have to go to work too because like if I had a high powered CEO job that mm -hmm. I had to get to, mm -hmm. I'd leave the dishes in the sink. Yes. I wouldn't finish the yes. dishes and tell, you know, my board of directors I'm here late because I had to finish the dishes. Well this shows your your real passion that, that it's that this important. is you have a obviously a goal, mm -hmm. a set point in mind, maybe twenty years from now, where would you like to see yourself? I mean I'd like to be way better of a painter than I am now. Mm -hmm. I would like to do more complicated things. I would like to be more nationally recognized. Mm -hmm. I'd like to be asked to be in wonderful shows. Like mm -hmm. I see these wonderful shows going on all over mm -hmm. the place. And you know, it, it's one thing to enter shows mm -hmm. and get into them mm -hmm. and you know, get an award or not get an award. Mm -hmm. But one of the big things is to be asked to be in a show yes. by your peers. Yes. And there's just a few of, you yes. know, like a few other artists mm -hmm. that are asked to be in a particular mm -hmm. show. That would be mm -hmm. that would be wonderful. Like I see mm -hmm. these wonderful women painting women shows mm -hmm. that take place in different places. There was um, a book out a, maybe a couple years ago where different artists were asked to paint Star Wars related things. Like Star Wars characters right. or their own little scene from Star Wars, any of the Star Wars movies. Can we hold this one up one mm -hmm. more time? Which one? Or right just here? let's show this one more sure. time. I'm, li I'm listening to what you're okay. saying, but I don't know if we gave him adequate time. And he, mm -hmm. he has such a nice abdomen, I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he is a very cute grandpa. Yeah. But, and it but was, you did show us a, a view that most artists wouldn't even think to paint. Yeah. It was a major coup because you never see people with this much fun stuff to paint walking around half naked. And you're right. And it was it was a coup. And knowing you, you don't usually put the, this kind of background in. I've never seen you paint. Well, it just seemed to be. It just seemed appropriate. It seemed to, to have. And I did have to make my own little pretend landscape, which mm -hmm. I'm not very good at landscape. So I'm hoping that I have. Well, it looks fabulous. It it looks enough fabulous to make it to me to make it yes take its continue take its what place. continue what you were saying. Um, but I also want to because I don't want to run out of time. I want to mm -hmm. hold this one up. Oh, okay. This one is a painting with a story as well. Oh my. This one, Beautiful it's eye. called Nine and a Half for Life. Mm -hmm. And this was somebody that I met who is, um, who was going through, actually she was on the recovering end of going through cancer. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that had happened to her while she was in the ICU um, she lost a finger Oh, because that's, oh, I I, I'm not sure exactly the process and, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's probably a medical term, but certain parts of you don't get enough circulation and oh. um, it, because she was in the ICU, it, the intensive care unit, it just didn't work oh. out and she ended up losing a finger. Oh. I wish the finger. camera can see this because I love how you not only get the juicy reds in here, but then the little gray highlights, so mm -hmm. the little soft whites. As I'm looking yeah. at you now, I see a little white, a little gray. But most people would not think to even put that in the face. And she had an interesting, like she just had this serenity about her Aww. where she, and I hadn't, I didn't know her before, but mm -hmm. um, she really struck me as just, she was, she was recovering, she was on you know, steroids. So she wasn't looking the way she normally Yes, look. but you saw um, beauty in her. And oh, hearing the story, absolutely. I'm immediately engaged to the face and the mm -hmm. story. And I think that is so special and so wonderful that you can be so daring and you're helping us to learn. Mm -hmm. Look beyond the pretty back or the profile mm -hmm. or the, the woman without the wrinkles. Look at these faces and they are intriguing, mm -hmm. very beautiful. I wish you had the portrait here, the scream, you screaming. I think it's called the scream. Oh, or that fear. One, it's called fear. Yes, the fear itself. Mm -hmm. That one is here. You know what? I'll put this over. Okay. Here. That was. Um, that one is actually at the Cleveland Artist Foundation right now at oh, the Beck it? Center. At the yeah. Beck Center. That's the one you you saw at the at the show. It's, it's still there. It's going to be there till December 31st. Of course, this is airing in January. So, 
it's not there anymore. Well, you make sure to tell us at the end all the places that we can mm -hmm. see okay. your okay. artwork. Mm -hmm. And um, we have so, ma so much to see here. Absolutely. I want to hold this one up again. And okay. what is this? Oh, this, this is beautiful. This one is my dad. <gasps> this one is my beautiful. dad. Beautiful. And it's called, in all probability, my mm -hmm. father, the mathematician. Mm -hmm. And my dad Aww. is a mathematician. He was a professor at Case for many, mm -hmm. many years. And um, he's, he's 87? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's 87 right now. Um, well, he still has that little doing, smile. It looks yeah. like he's just about to break out into a laugh. Yeah, he's he's doing real well, and this really really looks a lot like him. It does. And um, I think I I kind of you know well, this is, really this nailed, is a, nailed him this on this one. This is a legacy. This is something that you really can feel good about passing down to mm -hmm. your family yeah. and your loved ones. And my my family, I've painted people in my all the people in my family multiple times. I don't mm -hmm. know if they like him or don't like mm -hmm. him, but there they but, are. But, you know, it goes <laughs> back to Lucian Freud said he made an attempt to make a record. Mm -hmm. Now, when he said make a record with his paintings of people that he loved, mm -hmm. it was a way of writing a love note. It was a yeah. documentary yeah. thing, far beyond, beyond just a portrait. Right. He was making, a, 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 he was documenting mm -hmm. life yeah. and all the wrinkles and all yeah. the funny little personality traits. Yeah. And Lovely. all that to me is the fun stuff. Yes. I mean that. I think it's. I think it's very sad when, if you paint somebody a commission portrait, mm -hmm. and the client wants you to sort of pull back on those things mm -hmm. and not show that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. They, because um, basically what they're doing is they're just they're deciding, and what society has decided is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, and that, that you say you don't want to paint sappy. Right. You would rather paint right. something that engages the viewer, mm -hmm. right. that maybe they even are a little um, confused about, right. but they're right. engaged. Makes them uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think that that's one of the hallmarks of a good painting. Mm -hmm. Like, I think the worst thing you can do with a painting is walk right by it because oh. it blends in so well. Oh, people do you know? that all the time at my house. <laughs> they walk, and these these are some well, paintings you know, from other people. At these my are, house, too. They, these are paintings that I have proudly bought of other people, mm -hmm. and I love them, and I walk by, and I will gaze for a couple seconds mm -hmm. after 25 years, and then other people come in the home, and they just, mm -hmm. and it just blows well, me away. one of the things paintings that people tend to do is they make you more uncomfortable because they... Two more minutes. Go Two ahead more. and talk. Oh, yes. See and how actually, time flies. Speaking Judy? of, makes you more uncomfortable. This one here oh, is kind of an yes. extreme. It's. Um, I really did. It does look like her, mm -hmm. but not on a good day. This is called. This is called Sunshine and Curlers. Sunshine and, and Curlers. Her her identity will remain anonymous, <laughs> but her the the way the light was going through the translucent papery skin on her neck yes and the through her ear and around her, you know and through the curlers yes I thought it was just I thought it was just beautiful yes and um, so you know this lady I do okay I do. but she will remain it's anonymous a fabulous it's painting. Not a, it's not uh, it's not flattering whatsoever and she looks way better on good on a good day in on real a life good day she does but it's also an interesting you know to have something like this in your home mm-hmm where you don't know the person. I would have this of, of myself in mm -hmm. my home, just whimsical and kind but of in your face curlers. If, yeah. it's some, if, if it's somebody, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Listen, I, I, we only have 30 more mm -hmm. seconds, okay. I think, but I wanted, and this is fabulous, fabulous, but I wanted to ask you, if you had one last painting, what would it be of? Ah, I would hopefully be a very old, you know, 98-year-old lady, and mm -hmm. I would do a nude self-portrait. Would you? Because, of course I would. <laughs> I'm 98, I can do whatever I want. Yes. And yes. that is exactly and what I would, would do. And we would call you Mrs. Luciana. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of his mindset. Yeah, and so, he, he has done some nude self portraits yeah. too. And I will once I'm, you know, very old and more interesting. Okay. And I'm still okay. too young and beautiful. Okay, well, I don't, I'm, I'm not ready to go there yet. <laughs> but I do want to say thank you so much for coming. And I think it's about time to wrap it up. But do me a favor, can we both say Happy New Year? Happy New Year. See you.